Morning friends. We're back home in Mexico. And I'd like to thank those of you who are loyal viewers to my channel because you want to know about what's life like as a retiree in Ajijic, Mexico. Uh, and I thank you for following along and sticking with me even though we just spent seven months in the USA in our motorhome. I know that you're more interested in uh, what goes on in Mexico than you are what goes on in the RV lifestyle. There are others of you who have come to my channel in the last few months who may not even have been aware that Lynn and I uh, live in Mexico. We have our principal residences here in Ajijic, Mexico, in the state of Jalisco, just south of the second largest city in Mexico, Guadalajara. We've lived here for, uh, in the area for uh, 20 years, the first three years, six months at a time. Uh, coming down in our, our, our older motorhome, older than the one we have now. And uh, then we had to uh, start making a decision. We come down here for six months to Ajijic and say, boy, we like it here. Uh, maybe we should uh, buy a house. What we were doing for the first three years, and this would have been in 2001, 2, and 3, we came down, we stored the motorhome, and then rented a house uh, the first, uh, first year it was three months and then it was six months and six months. And of course we kept looking at houses to buy and the prices were going up dramatically at that time. So we would see something that we really thought we liked but we didn't quite have the cash to buy it and buying something here in Mexico is cash, it's not financed. <clears throat> so we would see something we liked but we didn't quite have enough cash to, to buy it full cash no financing here at that time it still isn't very much um, you can get it but it's short term and balloons and if you want a house in Mexico, you ought to still uh, plan on paying cash. Anyway, uh, we'd go back to Portland, Oregon, where I owned uh, a number of rental properties, and say, well, let's sell something, and we'll go back to Mexico, and we'll have more cash. So come down next year with an extra $30,000, and oh my gosh, the prices have gone up again. Well, after doing that for a couple of years, um, uh, I had seen literally hundreds of houses here along the north shore of Lake Chapala. Matter of fact, the realtor that I was working with who um, initially started showing me houses finally said one day, Jerry, you're just going to go with me to all of the brokers opens, which means that when all new listings come on, the brokers go see it first. He said, you're just going to go with me to all the broker's opens, and you're going to drive. <laughs> so anyway, I've seen literally um, hundreds of houses here at Lakeside. But that was 20 years ago now. And a lot of them have been built since, and certainly a lot of them have been remodeled since. Anyway, we've come down with another $30,000, and we're still priced out of the market. And finally, in 2004, Lynn put her foot down and said, Jerry... You're going to have to bite the bullet or we're going to never have a house here. So we did. We, uh, we bought the first half of this property. And I'll give you a little tour of the property in a minute. Um, we bought uh, 800 acres lakefront property here on Lake Chapala. And uh, actually it's 901 square meters. Did I say acres? Never mind. Anyway. Uh, we then soon realized that the family that we bought it from also owned the place next door. And that uh, he was a doctor out in Puerto Vallarta. So we went to Puerto Vallarta, we found him, we contacted him, and we made him an offer on the other 
half of what is now all my property. So I actually have two deeds and um, I've built this living room I'm sitting in between the two houses in order to join them all as one house, which is now uh, 3,700 square feet. Anyway, um, we made him an offer. We wrote a private contract. Uh, took us six years to close because when he and his brother inherited these two properties, the brother I bought the first house from probated it and the other brother, the doctor in Puerto Vallarta, never got around to probating it, and it had been many years. So it took six years, um, and the story is really six years long if I told you the whole story. I'll tell you one part of it. We got to within 45 days of closing four years into the, into the problem. And uh, the first property we were able to buy because um, the owner had gone in for an operation and through oxygen uh, deprivation had come out uh, mentally incompetent. So his wife had a power of attorney when we bought the first property uh, to sign for him. We got within 45 days of closing after four years on the second property and 23 relatives were having to sign off on this probate. And the person who was mentally incapacitated died, negating the wife's power of attorney, and they had to start the probate over. It took another two years. Anyway, it took me six years to get title to the second half of my property. And, um, well, let me show you around the property a little bit. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Just going to give you a quick tour today, maybe more later. I just grabbed the camera off the tripod there. Coffee. That's the purple couch I was sitting on. People always wonder about what color is it. The manufacturer says it's Amy Blackberry. And we painted the mantle and that long shelf there the same color. And curiously enough, even though we bought these couches in the United States, when we went to Sherwin-Williams paint here in Ahihik. I walked in and said, I need something. Uh, it's called Amy Blackberry in the United States. And then we walked over to the thing and picked that out. Amy Blackberry, same name here. Sherwin-Williams paint. Anyway, um, this goes upstairs. We call that little room there the cat room because we used to have a cat and that's where we kept the cat box. Uh, we have three bedrooms and two baths up there. Quick tour today. Uh, dining room, Lynn is uh, working on her coloring books. That's my uh, Yamaha Grand Piano covered up there. The mirror is off the wall because over here we're working on some Solitria. I'll tell you some more about that in a second. That's my uh, computer desk. Um, out there is the pool. Well, we'll go out there. Uh, dining room. Kitchen. Salitre. Salitre is um, something that Mexican walls do. It's a chemical process between the cement and the uh, caul in the, in the plaster. And uh, either groundwater can do it along the bottom of your walls. They start growing like cancer. If you had pop rocks, not pop rocks, but uh, magic gardens when you were a kid in an aquarium and you put vinegar in there and they grow stalactites, that's the same process. Anyway, this is from a toilet leaking while we were gone for seven months upstairs. And um, it's all dug out and reconcreted. Uh, well, that one's not reconcreted. You can see the bricks and the... Uh, Dala, that's the concrete, re steel reinforced concrete beam there. Uh, I built all of this stuff here in this living room. I designed and built. All of the windows and doors were, um, I designed them and they were um, welded right here on the property from stock metal. 
Uh, there's, uh, I have over 350 videos. You can go back and see the construction of this if you're interested. We sometimes uh, argue about whether this is the front yard or the backyard. If you go by tradition, obviously that's the car gate. We come there, so you would go to the front of the house from where you arrive, right? Well, there's the front of the house. We, however, talk about the front yard and the backyard differently. We decided the house faces the lake, so the front yard is over there by the pool, and this is the backyard. Uh, my van, it started, ran fine. It took me a couple of days to get the Quattromoto running. I had to get a new battery and drain all the old gas out and a carburetor cleaner. Usually the Quattromoto, the Honda ATV, this is its garage over here. That cover there, the gray cover is for my BMW Roadster, which got picked up and went to the mechanic the other day, I, it wouldn't idle right. Um, ran fine at high RPM, but idling was shaking a lot. We placed a couple of air induct parts on it, but that didn't fully do the job. No. Anyway, uh, it went to the mechanic and He'll uh, get it back to me in a few days, I'm sure. Uh, you can see all these things on the ground. They're like palm fruits and the yellow stuff is blossoms. Uh, my friend Danielle is coming to trim the palms here tomorrow. And we have to do that about three times a year. And I think I have the uh, 10 palm trees. These are queen palms from Brazil, and I was starting all over here, I would definitely get different kinds of palms. They are messy, messy, messy. The barbecue, got to clean it up. I keep it open because otherwise the cockroaches think it's a condo. That's the kitchen. <laughs> My invention right here, of course, that's a glass door that closes that off, and now we get air, and in order to keep it there, I put that hook there. Why do I do it that way? Because when you open the door, it has to move. Watch this. I'm opening the door. See? I'm opening the door. Watch this move. It took me a long time to figure that out. And I have it on three doors. The kitchen uh, part of the door that opens up and over here. So this is the front yard. <laughs> the pool. Table. I made that thing up there from scrap left over from doing the door. Just had a bunch of them laying around and put them together there. Kind of looks like a pot or something. Uh, outdoor shower I've never completed. That was the plan. Outdoor kitchen we haven't used for years. My mechanical butterfly bought that in Quartzsite, Arizona. I don't know. Should be work should be working better. Mm, I don't know. Ferns. Every once in a while the leaf cutter ants come and clean these up. You can see these here? That's because the leaf cutter ants have come and taken all the leaves off. 
And they'll do that in one night. We cut that tree down last summer. Um, it was a guamuchal. A guamuchal is a kind of a bean that has a edible fruit in it. It's kind of like sweet jicama. Federal zone. Uh, this is not my property. Um, it's a concession from the federal government, and the concession is held by uh, the family that I bought the house from. Um, they still retain that. They have a little house down there, which is illegal, but since it's been there for about 50 years, nobody pays attention to illegality. We haven't uh, done any... Oh, damn. My feet are burning hot. It's not hot today. It's 82 degrees, but catching a lot of sun there on the dark rocks. If I stand on a stand on a light-colored rock, it'll be okay. Ooh, there's an even lighter one right down there. As a matter of fact, I'll get over there on the grass. Cactus Garden uh, used to be beautiful. We haven't done anything with it for a while. It's time to cut it all out of there and start over. We used to do a lot of vegetable gardening. This was a big vegetable garden here. We just use it kind of for a burn place now. All that trash over there, one of my projects this summer is to get rid of all that. This also is a garden. I have sprinklers all built into these places that come out of the well. And like I said, we haven't done gardening. Part of the problem with gardening is that uh, Lynn used to do it, and she's not able to do that anymore physically. And then for several years, we had our friend Jesus. Uh, we buy the seeds, and he'd plant them and take care of the garden and our water, our seeds, our property. And he'd take most of the vegetables for his family, and we'd take what we wanted. That all kind of ended when Jesus died of cancer. Uh, avocados. We had seven avocado trees when we moved in. Oh, that one, that one's edible. Um, there's another one. This isn't my favorite. Oh, that one's no good. This isn't my favorite avocado tree. Uh, my favorites aren't here anymore. They died or got old or whatever, but... Oh, there's a good-looking one. Oh, nope. It's full of ants. Oh, so is that one, as a matter of fact. They're better if you pick them off the tree. But guacamole does fall out of the sky here. Oh, you wonder how long we've been here? That's a eucalyptus tree. Lynn planted it the year we bought the house. It was about three foot tall and the diameter of a pencil. And that's the second time it's been that big because a terrible windstorm broke it off about three foot above the ground. Uh, I don't know. Eight, nine years ago. Uh, we bought the house in 2004. So, anyway, that's the short tour. Um, you only saw the living room, kitchen, dining room, sunroom. That's a bodega for my lawnmower. See this white stuff here? That's a powder, because there was a trail of leaf cutter ants here the other night. And uh, I powdered them all the way over to here. They were... This uh, bougainvillea was full of them. And the leaves were all down here. They were carrying leaves, leaves, leaves all the way back over there to their nest. The nest was way back over here. Their nest is underneath here. And um, that's uh, in, uh, a 
agrochemical that I use. They use it out. It's uh, banned in 50 countries, including the United States. So don't bother asking me what it is if you live in the United States. And uh, it's banned because it's carcinogenic. And uh, by the way, if you're eating tomatoes in the United States, you may be getting it because they use it on their Roma tomato fields here. It's a, it's a fungicide. No, excuse me, not a fungicide. It's an insecticide. This is a fountain that I built. Um, I gotta clean it up and get it going. We have to keep a chlorine tablet in it quite often to keep the mosquito larvae from populating the water. Anyway, uh, let's go sit on the couch and talk a little bit more. Oh no, you don't get to see the combination. Except now you know it's four digits, right? <laughs> okay. Let me sit down. Need another shot of coffee. We're glad to be home. We stayed in the United States in our RV um, a couple of months longer than we have in the last two or three years. And although we really enjoy that lifestyle and we love our RV, we're glad to be home here in Mexico. Uh, we stayed up there a couple extra months because of COVID and getting shots. We would usually come back uh, around the 1st of March, but around the 1st of March, uh, we were finally able to schedule a uh, COVID shot, and it turned out to be Moderna, which required a second shot, and so our second Moderna shot, we didn't get until April 24th. No, we got it April uh, 22nd, and flew home on April 24th. So we've been here for uh, a couple of going on three weeks, and uh, I haven't made a video since I got back which is the longest period of time in maybe four years that I haven't made a video uh, or posted a video. <clears throat> uh, let's just say I've been on vacation. The fact is that I do this channel uh, for no other reason than to entertain myself. And uh, if I happen to uh, pass on some information to you that's valuable about uh, RVing and that lifestyle or about retiring and living in uh, wonderful Mexico, uh, so much the better if it's a, uh, um, something worthwhile for you. But, as I started to say, the, the real reason I do it is because it entertains me. And what's entertaining to me is having something useful and interesting to do. And I've had no lack of interesting and useful things to do in the last three weeks. Well, let's back up a whole month. Um, those extra three and a half weeks between the first Moderna shot and the second Moderna shot, which was the uh, last part of March and uh, the first three weeks of April, um, I had something very interesting and worthwhile to do. I, we drove over to uh, southeast Arizona from where we spend most of our time around Yuma and Quartzsite, which is in the west part of Arizona. Uh, one of our favorite spots down there on the Colorado River. The Colorado River is, of course, the boundary between Arizona and California, so we're usually in the east part of Arizona. But we went to the southeast part of Arizona, down around Patagonia. And uh, it's a beautiful area. High, four or five thousand feet, cooler. Um, well, if you've been watching my videos, you saw a couple of those 
from that area. But uh, what we're doing there is helping um, our son buy a house there. And he has now moved there, so there's been a lot of uh, back and forth on the phone, and we actually met there and viewed the properties that he bought in person, uh, along with him and inspectors and realtors and whatever. Anyway, that was an interesting, very interesting thing for us to do, and he's bought a really wonderful property there that we're looking forward to getting back to this fall. Uh, um, then when we got home, um, there were a number of things to do, some of which I've uh, filmed and documented for you, uh, like paying my property taxes for our house here in Mexico, and uh, going and paying for my license plates on my van, my BMW Roadster, and the uh, Quattromoto, the Honda uh, ATV. Uh, haven't gone to pay the water bill. We're going to do that. Uh, pay it once a year. And uh, working on the salutary that I showed you. What else? Oh, fixing two toilets. The one that leaked over there and caused that uh, problem in the dining room. And another one in here that uh, I didn't show you. We call it the red bathroom. And it um, has a... It's not creating a wall problem, but it runs every 15 minutes because it's leaking. Anyway, working on that. Um, no lack of things to entertain me is the point. Uh, glad to be back in Mexico and looking forward to making some videos about retired life in Mexico. Thanks again to those of you who are here because you're interested in that and you've, you've uh, stuck with me through my RV half of my life uh, during the year. And uh, for those of you who are new to my channel and came to me because you were RVing fans, hey, uh, retiring in Mexico is a really good other half of life if you are a part-time, part full-time RVer. You know, people ask us a lot when we're traveling, are we full-time RVers? Well, yeah, we're full-time RVers for about half the year. That makes any sense. We're part-time, full-time RVers. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.